This is the Huion Canvas GT221. It's a giant 21.5 inch drawing display that plugs into a Mac or a PC. It comes with everything you need to connect it. It even comes with extra pens in case something happens to your first one. This is a review unit that's been provided to me by the folks over at Huion. I get the feeling that Huion really wanted to make a top of the line drawing monitor that looks and feels premium. There are little touches that make it a better experience. The cords come out from along the side so they never get in the way. It feels solid when you plug those cords in. Overall, the build itself also feels solid and not cheap. And they have foregone the standard pen holder that a lot of these tablets come with and have instead included this sleek little case to hold your extra pens and nibs. It also has express keys or shortcut keys along the side of the device. Regular viewers of this channel know that I rave about shortcut keys every chance I get. Dating all the way back to my debut album which dropped in 2012. The screen is somewhere between a matte and a gloss screen. They call it an anti-glare screen. It's very smooth. It's not exactly exactly like a mat. One of the nice things about it is you don't get really sharp reflections on it. If you're hovering over it and looking into it, you're not going to see yourself looking back at you. You also don't get the color diffusion that you get on a lot of the matte screens either. The anti-glare screen is really not a bad compromise when you break it down. It's better than drawing on really smooth glass and it doesn't dull the colors quite as much as a matte screen does. The large screen is really, really nice and it's not just because it looks good. On a 22 inch monitor, having that much room to draw feels like luxurious. Because of the anti-glare screen, the colors don't look quite as good as the GT191 I reviewed a couple weeks ago, but they're still pretty accurate out of the box. I didn't have to do a lot of adjusting. The resolution is full HD, 1920 by 1080. The only downside is that on a larger screen like this, especially when you're hovering over it, you stretch all of those pixels out to a larger area, so you can definitely see pixels when you're right on top of it. A lot of screens on tablets like this have hotspots on them, like places on the screen that actually get hot over time as you use the device. This one does too, but it's along the top of the screen. My hand, at least, never rests up there, which is good because you don't want your hand on a really hot spot of the screen. It has the same stand as the GT191, and it's solid at high angles, very solid, but not at lower angles. As the tablet goes down, the tablet starts to rest on its own base. It's not nearly as stable once you get down below, say, past 30 degrees. Other tablets that I've tested with Similar stands have feet at the bottom to prevent this from happening. The pen, this pen to be exact, is the same exact pen that you're going to find on some of the other Huion models. It has 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and it is a battery powered pen. Because it's a battery powered pen, it does have a little bit of wobble or jitter to the lines. I do notice a slight wobble on the slower angled lines that I draw, but nothing a stroke straightener won't knock right out. The best part of this pen is how well it holds pressure. It's pretty consistent. There is no place on the pressure curve where all of a sudden it blows out or it starts to feel like it's flowing faster than you would expect it to. From that perspective, this is the closest I've seen a pen get to Wacom's pressure curve. The pressure really shows when you draw a lot of strokes quickly. You get really consistent lines. The one knock against this pen and other battery powered pens out there is that the initial activation force or how hard you have to press in order to get a line is a little bit tight. And I don't mean tight as in, hey, that's tight. Height. I mean like it takes more pressure than you think it should in order to activate the line. Now this is also on par with pretty much every other Wacom alternative out there I tested so it's nothing unusual or out of the ordinary. But at the same time this is something that light sketchers should definitely be aware of when they're picking out a drawing tablet. Also if you rely on tilt functionality this stylus, this pen, isn't going to support that. Is there parallax? Yes! But it's on par with every other Wacom alternative out there. You can see some displacement from where the tip of the pen is and where your cursor appears on the screen but it's just something that you get used to. The closest competitors to this tablet would be like the Wacom 24HD, which is going to be replaced shortly, or the XP Pen 22, which I just reviewed earlier this year. Full disclosure, I haven't reviewed that Wacom 24HD, but I have obviously reviewed the XP Pen quite a bit, so it's probably a good idea to take a minute here and to compare this device to that device, which is very similar. Overall, I really like them both, but there are a couple little things that I think the Huion does better. Yeah. <laughs> 
First, I like the slight matte finish to the screen instead of the reflective surface that you get on the XP pen. This stylus pressure on the Huion, like I mentioned before, is a little bit better than the XP pen. The XP pen hits a point in the mid-range where it applies pressure a little too fast. And like I said before, the Huion pen has the most consistent pressure curve of any Wacom tablet alternative that I have tested up to this point. Also, on the Huion, you have these sliders along the side next to the express keys, and you can set that to adjust your brush size or zoom in and out. That's a nice touch. I really like that. The one area I would give the XP pen a little bit of the edge is the XP pen's pen itself. That's because it has this rubbery grip on it, so it's just a little bit more comfortable to hold. I should also mention that the XP pen stand is more stable at lower angles as well. What are the negatives? Honestly, there really aren't that many. I already mentioned the slight wobble to the pen strokes and the tight initial activation force, but other than that, it's a really good tablet. One thing that I pointed out in the GT191 review is that there were some ghost going on when you scroll on a web page or you were looking at dark images. I noticed that isn't as prominent on this device. Also, when I first pulled out the pen and started to draw on the screen, it made this horrendously awful screeching noise. But as I started to draw on it more and more, I noticed that it started to go away and it's gone away to the point where I haven't even been able to replicate that noise for this review. I guess this tablet's like a good horse saddle. You just gotta break it in. You're breaking a horse saddle, right? This is one of the best tablets I've had the opportunity to test out. I definitely think it's a step above the 19 inch version of the Huion, and it's just a little bit better than the XP Pen 22 as well. Now, several other folks on YouTube have had the opportunity to review this tablet. Over on my website, I have aggravated or aggregated let's just say collected some other reviews. You can check those out over there. Link down below. So if you have any questions about anything that I didn't cover in this review, let me know down below in the comments or you can always hit me up over on Twitter. That's all I've got. I'd like to thank all the people who support this channel over on Patreon or the people who click any of my Amazon links on my site here anywhere. Thank you guys, really appreciate that stuff. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you guys a little bit later.